this is going to be a continuation of my La Sombra clan videos. If you have not seen the first one, then I suggest you check it out up here. In that one, I talked a lot about their history. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about their relationship with ghouls, what it's like to be embraced by them, and then we're going to talk a little bit about their clan variants and what werewolf tribes you could throw into the mix. Let's start off with ghouls. So what do the La Sombra think of ghouls? They hate them. They hate them with a fiery, burning passion that wells within their undead souls. To the La Sombra, the vampire world or the canite world is bad enough. And when you have to start throwing mortals or humans into the mix, they are just so easy to control when they have such abilities in potence and dominate as disciplines. And because mortals tend to be spongy, a little bit flabby sometimes, and very breakable, the La Sombra really don't respect that at all. Now, this doesn't mean that the La Sombra shy away from ghouls entirely. In fact, their daily lives require having hordes of them, mostly bankers and lawyers and accountants to run all the money. And if you're going to be a ghoul for La Sombra, this would probably be the position you would want to be in, because as long as the money's all there, you get to keep on living. And I would presume that if you're in this cast of ghouls for the La Sombra, you won't get treated entirely like dog crap, but it would be better than being one of the personal attendants. Imagine being the personal attendant to a La Sombra and you are a ghoul. Your instruction is to now brush their hair for 100 times. If you do it 99 times, you're dead. If you do it 101 times, you're also dead. La Sombra are kind of vain like that. Now, if you're going to be a ghoul for a La Sombra, you're likely going to be a sniveling, driveling, whiny idiot because that's how they view mortals in general. And there is one last type of ghoul that I would rather hate to be when it comes to the La Sombra. This would be the one to help them with technology. Have you ever tried to help your technically inept grandma or grandparent try to use Skype or Zoom for that matter? Now imagine having to do that for a vampire who will kill you at the slightest frustration. So what about the La Sombra embrace? As it goes, most mortals aren't generally well looked upon when it comes to the La Sombra. However, there are an exceptional few, those who seem to have very little in the way of morality or willing to do anything that it takes to get ahead, as well as those who generally succeed against all odds. The La Sombra don't have time for weakness. If you as a human can exist at the pinnacle of excellence, you will probably draw the eye of a La Sombra. From the Magister's perspective, if they're looking for a human to turn to a La Sombra or to embrace, they call it targeting those fit for more than a human life. Because human lives are apparently boring. This tends to mean that the La Sombra clan is made up of counterculturalists, sociopaths, deviants, and scarred survivors. So when you're a person who's full of ambition, desire to progress in life, and willing to do absolutely anything to get it, those traits tend to stick around after you've been embraced. So new La Sombra vampires tend to want to continue this, stocking up power, figuring out who they can manipulate or bribe for favors. Anything to start elevating themselves. Now, if you do catch the attentions of La Sombra, I am sorry, your life is going to be a living hell. The La Sombra, if you're targeted by them, will want to know, how do you stand up against pressure? Will you rise to the occasion or will you crumble under the weight of despair? Those who are targeted for the embrace may feel like their life is falling apart around them. They could very well be cut off from their friends and family. They could lose their job or any potential opportunities that they had within that job. They could even be very physically harmed or maimed by some horrific creature in the night. And it's how this mortal reacts to this pressure, to these tests, that decides whether or not they actually become embraced and are welcomed into the La Sombra clan. And speaking of clan variants, if you are enjoying the video today, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you want to keep getting more like this from myself, then please hit subscribe with the bell so you never miss an upload. If you are interested in supporting myself, I do have links to Patreon and Coffee in the description below. The first variant I'm going to talk about is the Angelus Aether. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, and you can let me know about it in the comments below. These guys tend to blur the lines a little bit between the Bali and the La Sombra. They're a bit of a, a blend between the two. They have been around since the Middle Ages. 
This particular clan variant is descendant from a very powerful vampire who went by the name of Azaniel. He was not a very nice vampire, he was very monstrous. He also acted as the Bali leader for a short period of time there. The Lasombra are also known as the Clan of Shadows, and their power bases typically come from the Catholic Church. Over time, the Angelus Aetor made some inroads within the church or within the clergy. How much power they were actually able to wield is not entirely known, but they did survive the Inquisition. Since the Dark Ages, this particular bloodline has been dwindling in number. Azaniel went on a bit of a rampage, and he actively sought to destroy this particular bloodline. Some of them did live, but in the 20th century, there is only around 50 of this particular clan variant. Now, when the Bali started to make a comeback, so too did this bloodline, and they actually worked with the Inquisition to eradicate the Infernalists. This bloodline does tend to have quite an extensive knowledge of demons, and the Angelus Aetor can actually achieve demonhood through several ways, one of which being eradicate the Infernalists. Now, the Kibbalat al Kayal, or the Arabian La Sombra, they were notable among their Islamic kindred. Islam did take a hold on some of this particular bloodline, especially in Iberia. This also caused a lot of problems with the Baite. There was also some Christian presence within the Kayal, and they felt trapped with a lot of the pressure that they were receiving to transition or change beliefs to Islam. Now, the Kablad al Kayal, they also had representatives specifically to the Amisi Nocti. And even in modern nights, you will still find some Lasombra who just don't want anything to do with the Sabbat at all, and they are still part of the Ashira. So, what about the Lasombra anti tribu? Well, if you ask a Lasombra, they may tell you something like this There are no Lasombra anti tribu! The Lasombra that are part of the Sabbat, well, they deny that these traitors even exist. And the Lasombra anti tribu, they do exist. They view themselves as part of the Lasombra, but the rest of them, or most of the rest of them, don't agree. The Lasombra who are actually in the Camarilla, they don't really operate any differently than the ones that are in the Sabbat. They just simply happen to think that the Camarilla is a better place to carry out the Jihad and get their clan goals done as a whole than in the Sabbat. For those that are in the Camarilla, they view the Sabbat mass embrace as just wasteful. And even in the Camarilla, the La Sombra, they don't tolerate fools. You can still die if you piss off a La Sombra, or if you don't complete a task. The Camarilla, unfortunately, cannot afford to waste the talents and the power that comes with some of these anti tribu. But with the knowledge and the power that these La Sombra seek, the Camarilla can't fully trust them either. If we're going to blend in a few other things from World of Darkness, there is a couple of clans that, and one of them is going to be fairly recurring, that I think would work well here. When you're dealing in the La Sombra, if you're going to deal with something that's anti-establishment, because that's what the La Sombra are going to be all about. Money, power, prestige, for the sake of having prestige. The Bonars are the scavengers, the survivors of the Guru Nation. They are also viewed as little more than mongrels compared to the other Guru tribes. The Bonars, they see themselves as the underdog who will eventually win and triumph against their foes because they were underestimated. And this happens actually quite often with the Bonars, meaning that they are very often underestimated. Most Bonars are extremely savvy when it comes to surviving on the streets because that's what they do, they survive. No other tribe is as accomplished when it comes to urban fighting as the Bonars. They primarily use guerrilla tactics within city limits, meaning that they use the element of surprise. Most Bonars are also vagabonds, the homeless. They typically don't set down roots, they live on the streets. There is a very rare subset of Bonars that do live in the suburbs. These ones, if they do, tend to have very, very minimalist lives. However, for a Bonar, collectively, they embrace the idea that freedom is paramount. They are kind of everything that the La Sombra are not, and I think that would make for an interesting dichotomy and a good juxtaposition between the two clans. They would, they would absolutely hate each other. 
The other one, I'll say it again, is the glass walkers. They have been a reoccurring theme, and because they're one of the few tribes that actually enjoy living in the city and don't mind having that prestige or having those high profile corporate jobs. The glass walkers in any vampire chronicle, you're most likely going to run into them at some point. I mean, the glass walkers are also going to run into many other things like Banes, Fomori, Weaver influence, vampires, mages, changelings, to name just a few. Now, speaking of werewolf tribes, I do plan to update my old tribes videos with some newer content in a newer style, simply because I have a new presentation style and I want to, I want to update them. So stay tuned for that. If you want to see more of the vampire clans, then please click here now. Thank you to my brand new patron supporter, Benji. If you would like to support me, links to my Patreon and coffee are in the description below. My name's Nathaniel. This has been The Maple Table. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.